Welcome back. In the last session, we have discussed the gene cloning technique utilizing recombinant DNA technology, okay, the R DNA technology. Now, we will discuss a completely in vitro method of amplifying a piece of DNA. Okay. Now, what is PCR? PCR is a means to amplify a particular piece of DNA as I already told you. Amplify means making numerous copies. Okay. Numerous copies means making numerous clones. PCR can make billions of copies of a target sequence of DNA in a few hours that is extremely. Um, so, it is very useful that PCR can make uh, the target sequence of DNA in a few hours. It was invented in 1984 by, uh, by Dr. Mullis and uh, when he was very young, he discovered this process of uh, making copies of DNA fragments and he received the Nobel Prize very quickly. I think within the next 5 years, within 5 years see after discovery he got the Nobel Prize. And now every molecular biology lab will have a will have a one or many more PCR machines because this is fully automated now and PCR machines and to in order to make copies of the, the DNA. Its applications is vast and it is an integral part as I told you of molecular biology lab. Now, what is how do you do this uh, amplification? As I told you, it is a laboratory version, that means it is a, it is a in vitro, it is better to write that it is a in vitro version uh, of DNA replication in cells. Last time I told you that in cells recombinant DNA technology, how that can be utilized via the cells to make copies of the DNA and to make enough of the uh, substantial amount of proteins that you require. In PCR, because it is in vitro, entirely in vitro, you make copies of the DNA, but you do not get the proteins out of it, because the DNA is in the test tube, it is not inside the living system. So, although you make millions and millions of copies, but it is not living because it is not in the living system. So, you do not get the proteins, it is just the way to make the, the DNA, remember that. In our DNA technology, you can make the copies of the DNA, you can make your um, proteins also in the process, because it is being amplified inside the bacterial cells. Okay. The following, what are the requirements in PCR? First of all, in PCR, you need the DNA that you want to amplify, that is number one. Then, it requires a heat stable DNA polymerase like TAC polymerase. What is uh, heat stable DNA polymerase? Remember, polymerase is an enzyme and if it is DNA polymerase, that means it makes DNA oligonucleotide poly -oligo oligonucleotide uh, by, uh, by doing this 5 prime to 3 prime connection I told you. And so, it is a polymerase, DNA polymerase is an enzyme, but interestingly this is an enzyme which works at a higher temperature, it is a heat stable DNA polymerase. That is very interesting, because usually our proteins work in the biological system that we have at 37 degree is the temperature, optimum temperature, but if you if you uh, if the temperature goes higher, uh, the enzyme slowly loses the activity. So, if the temperature is above 50, uh, above 50 usually the enzymes lose the activity, okay. but this is a heat stable DNA polymerase like the TAC polymerase. Now, these enzymes are isolated from, from volcanic regions or hot spring where the temperature is very high. So, if some bacteria grows there, so those bacteria must be having and uh, producing enzymes. Uh, which are which work at a higher temperature. So, somebody must have thought that in the extreme conditions you can get uh, enzymes which work under extreme conditions like heat is one example. Similarly, at very cold temperatures how the enzymes work. So, you get the cryo uh, the enzymes which work under cryo conditions. Okay. 
so this is we are talking about a heat stable DNA polymerase. Then the all the four oligonucleotide triphosphates, these are mandatory requirements for synthesis of DNA. Remember again we are doing it in in vitro, in vitro you have to supply all the ingredients. That means, all the four nucleotide triphosphates are required that you have to add, you have to add a buffer and you have to definitely require magnesium, because this polymerase when it works the triphosphate remember the 3 prime OH attacks the 5 prime triphosphate and then the uh, pyrophosphate is reduced, but the negative charges are taken care of by, by chelation to the magnesium. And in addition to this, two short single stranded DNA molecules that serves as primers. Again, just to brush up your knowledge, uh, again I told you that DNA polymerase works only when there is a short duplex present in the system, double strand present in the system. Okay. And this short double strand is is provided in the form of what are called primers. We have seen the use of primers in Sanger's dideoxy sequencing method. Remember RNA polymerase does not require any primer. RNA polymerase can work uh, only on a single uh, on a single strand, but DNA polymerase requires a small segment of double strand in order to make the complementary strand. Okay. So, that is why you need to short single stranded DNA molecule that serve as primers. Now, let us discuss it. Okay. So, what is our problem? Our problem is defined that we have a piece of DNA, suppose we have one single strand present in my test tube. Okay. Now, what I need to do? I need to I need to take this in a in a ependorf and then add primers. Now, what are these primers? The primers are one which binds to one end that means, this is 5 prime to 3 prime and the other primer uh, binds to the other end of the complementary strand. That means, it binds to the 3 prime end but both prime both bind uh, primers bind in the 3 prime end that means, both are binding, this is binding at the right right most corner and this is binding at the left most corner, okay, because that has to be the primer has to bind from the 5 prime to 3 prime end and then the DNA synthesis takes place by attack of the 3 prime OH, because here 3 prime OH is free and here also 3 prime OH is free. And then if you supply all these oligonucleotide, uh, this nucleotide triphosphate pardon me this is not oligonucleotide this is nucleotide triphosphates. So, one by one depending on the sequence here they will be taken up and uh, the reaction will uh, proceed and you get the DNA piece. Okay. So, you add the primer and then you also add a heat stable not a simple DNA polymerase a heat stable polymerase which works whose optimum activity is usually between 70 to 80 degree centigrade. So, TAC polymerase I think works very well at between this temperature, but there is a particular temperature usually 72 degrees maintained by the machine. So, which falls within this range. So, that has got that works at at this temperature. Now, you so basically what you have this piece of test tube or epindorf and then you take the buffer, the magnesium, the DNA, you have added the four oligonucleotide triphosphates and you have added a heat stable DNA polymerase and you have added the primers. So, initially the primers will not will not join because it was basically the DNA was present as the double sorry the DNA was colored blue here. So, may I should make that blue. So, the initially the DNA was initially the DNA was this they are tied up with each other. Okay. So, in order for the primer to bind what you have to do you have to heat it. Okay. 
so the heating is done till the temperature reaches 95 degree centigrade. So, you make sure because 95 degree centigrade means that uh, all the DNAs that are present in the universe are except the extreme conditions all the DNAs will melt at this temperature. Okay. So, these DNA will melt now this is my original DNA that will form single strands. Okay. Now, you um, you have the primers also and primers are are given in excess large excess. So, what will happen now as you cool this the most likely because the primers are present in excess if you do not add the primers then they are going to self anneal with each other, but as the primers are present. So, what will happen your primers are present in excess. So, now the primers will hybridize with these single strands that are separated by heating at 95. So, after heating at 95 if you cool down to say about 40 degree then what will happen the primers will join at the two ends and then you heat it again to between keep the temperature between 70 to 80 degree. So, if you do that so what will happen now? So, you will get so, DNA polymerase will because that is the polymerase which works the TAC polymerase that works at very well at 70 to 80 degrees. So, this will happen. So, you get now two copies of the double stranded DNA you started with one copy now you get two copies. So, after one this is called one cycle what is a cycle cycle means you add you take everything heat it to around 95. So, that it becomes single stranded then cool it to around 40. So, that things the primers primers bind to the single strands and then you heat it back to about 72 degree centigrade and then what will happen the polymerase will work and the polymerase will complete the uh, extension of the chain make the complementary strand. So, this is the cycle then what you do then again you heat it to 95 degree centigrade. If you heat it to 95 degree centigrade now what you have you have this and you have this uh, you have another strand here another strand and this will be your. So, you have these four strands all separated now. Okay. And now you cool to about 40 degree the temperature may not be very accurate, but the science is very clear you heat it make it single strand you cool it. So, that it hybridizes with the primer and then you heat it to about 70 degree. So, that polymerase can work and complete the elongation of the chain. So, what will happen here now all the DNAs will be will have the primers. So, here will be the primer actually better write also this is your 5 prime end this is your 3 prime end. So, when the DNA is synthesized this is your 3 prime this is your 5 prime this is your original DNA 3 prime to 5 prime. So, that will be 5 prime to 3 prime. So, you maintain that. Okay. So, this will be so the first one is 5 prime to 3 prime the second one is 3 prime to 5 prime the third one is 5 prime to 3 prime and this last one is 3 prime to 5 prime that is your original piece of DNA. Now, when it uh, again cool so the primer will because it is 5 prime to 3 prime. So, the primer will bind to the 3 prime end here and this is 3 prime to 5 prime. So, now the primer will bind here and this is 5 prime to 3 prime. So, the primer will bind here and this is 3 prime to 5 prime. So, the primer will bind here. Okay. Now, what you will do you again heat it to 72. So, now what will happen everything will be. So, now this will be your another piece of DNA this will be the piece of DNA this will be sorry this will be your piece new piece of DNA 
and this will be your GVP sub TNA. So, that means now you started with 1 that means 2 to the power 0. Now, you have 2 to the power 1 you have 2 strands of double stranded DNA and after 2 cycles you have 2 to the power 2 that means 4 strands of double stranded DNA. So, now if you do n number of times, so ultimately how many you will get 2 to the power n. So, if you do it 10 times suppose, so 10 times so that will be 2 to the power 10 that is a huge number okay. and to do it it is a couple of hours and you get these copies of double stranded DNA. Uh, most interesting the breakthrough came in the polymerase chain in developing this polymerase chain reaction process is the discovery of this tag polymerase. Because what happens usually the if you heat something normal proteins uh, or normal enzymes if the temperature is kept at 95 the enzyme loses its activity and it becomes denatured and you cannot really get back the original activity that was a problem. But as soon as this this is tag polymerase is beautiful that after the discovery of this the whole thing can be automated. Earlier before the discovery of tag polymerase what you have to do you have to heat this all the time uh, you have to after cooling you have to all the time add the DNA polymerase every cycle because the polymerase will lose its activity and denatured at 95. But once this tag polymerase was discovered then what will happen because this is not denatured on the other hand it survives at 95 degree centigrade it survives definitely at 45 degree, 40 degree centigrade, but its optimum reactivity is at between 70 to 80. So, uh, you can depending on the number of copies you need you just do it, this number of cycles. Okay. So, that becomes 2 to the power uh, n, n cycles. Okay. So, I think this is uh, PCR reaction is repeated usually 20 to 40 times, 25 cycles usually takes about 2 hours. So, 2 to the power 25. So, 100,000 fold you increase. Okay. Step 1 I said 25, step 2 annual usually 40 and then 72 polymerase extend the chains as I told you these are the. Now, this is done by a machine these days this is called therm, thermocycler. Okay. So, you can change the temperature and can fix it at particular these thermocyclers are, are extremely uh, good in maintaining the temperature and also very quickly. So, you have to go 95 then quickly you have to drop to 40 and then you have to take it to 72. Okay. So, that can be done in a machine called thermocycler. Uh, actually the TAC DNA polymerase was purified from the hot spring bacterium Thermus aquaticus that is the bacteria in 1976 and that gave the uh, that actually laid the foundation of this automated DNA polymerase chain reaction. Okay. I think this is the whatever everything as I said um, this is by the way called the reverse primer because the extension goes in the reverse direction of the DNA and this is called the forward primer because this goes in the forward direction. Okay. I think I told about all this extension and then the number of copies that you get. Now, this is interesting suppose you have a DNA and you are interested only to copy from this to that region. Okay. So, my problem is I have a piece of DNA make it little bit uh, smaller. So, that and I want to I am interested only to copy from this to that. Okay. So, suppose this is your 5 prime end this is your 3 prime end. Now, you, if I want to copy from this and that only this region, so I have to use a primer which recognizes this part and I have to use a primer which recognizes this part, because then only copying can be done 
uh, of this zone. I do not need a primer from this side and from this side, then I will get the entire piece of DNA as the uh, as the copy. Okay. However, one thing is important when I do the first cycle, the first cycle what happens that this is the first cycle. Uh, let me just erase that uh, erase I think. Okay. So, in the first cycle what will happen? Let us see the original piece of DNA is this one and then you have the red portion which started from this one and then that goes up to the end here. So, this is the piece of DNA that you will get and from the other strand is here and that will because the primer the forward primer is here. So, your DNA that you will get will be up to this. So, the first cycle you really do not get the your copy that you wanted, you have extra one. So, this is your region of interest, but you are getting extra after the first cycle. Now, come to the second cycle, okay. the second cycle. So, what will happen here? The second cycle that means, the original this one is there and in the second cycle remember again the the uh, sorry take this one this is the 5 prime to 3 prime and this is the 3 prime to 5 prime okay so now if you look at this piece only where there is a small red part here now the your the this poly primer will bind here okay and for the other part this one which are the smaller ones, but containing extra than what you wanted that will have again a that will have a strand like this and a red part and a red part which is the up to this point sorry and a red part. Oh, I have actually uh, come to the end, uh, this is the red part. So, now in the next uh, what I say uh, that this is the second cycle. So, this part sorry uh, uh, this part will have a primer attached here. So, when that extends that will extend up to this point and similarly for this part the primer will be attached somewhere here and when this is extended that will form up to this part. Okay. So, the from the second cycle onwards you are getting one double strand. So, when this is uh, the other strand again contains only the original strand I am not uh, showing that other strand the other strand will have if I show it the other strand will be the sorry this is green. Uh, the other strand will be the normal strand containing the entire piece. So, again I repeat the first cycle you have this is the the primers where that will be attached. You have to design the primers according to the sequence here and according to the sequence there. So, but the first cycle we are seeing that you do not get the, the DNA only containing your zone of interest. You get extra this is extra on this side and on the other side this is extra and then second cycle when you again melt it, when you melt it from this strand you will get the actual the zone of interest a copy of that and from the other strand which has got overhang that also you get the uh, you get the, uh, the piece of interest. So, this is your piece of interest and that is your piece of interest. So, now you get after the second cycle this is your starting point you get the actual maybe I can. Um, you get the actual ones the red and the red here and the blue portion here. Okay. I hope that is clear. So, that is your starting point. So, two cycles you have to uh, you have to complete two cycles in order to get the first copy of the double strand DNA that you the zone with containing the region of interest. So, from then onwards you will get the 
only this part that will be copied okay because all the uh, primers will uh, either bind here or bind there and that will be extended up to the zone of interest so here the number of copies if i ask what will be the number of copies after 10 cycles of the zone of interest that will be 2 to the power n minus 2 because you have to first complete two cycles in order to come to a first strand of the double strand containing the zone of interest. So, after 10 cycles you will get 2 to the power 8 copies okay. that you remember and the other sometimes other problem is uh, given also that if you have only one strand of the DNA suppose you do not have the double strand you have only one strand of the DNA which you want to copy then how many copies you will get after 10 cycles first of all whether you can apply PCR to this or not yes you can apply you just make a primer that is the reverse primer and you also can write in the piece of paper that if the complementary strand was present what could have been your forward primer. So, you add both these primers and the single strand and you heat it and then cool as 95 then 40 and then 72. So, what will happen this part will be converted this primer because it did not have the complementary strand to start with that will remain there. So, now you have a double strand. So, one cycle is required to make the double strand and from then onwards you will get the double strand because now this primer uh, has the complementary strand. So, that can bind here. Okay. So, now you will have basically 2 to the power n minus 1. So, yes it is possible to also do PCR reaction on a single strand, but first cycle is needed to make the double strand and then from then onwards you can uh, copy the DNA. Okay. So, this is PCR what are the usefulness of PCR? PCR is so important has become a powerful tool in molecular biology. One can start with a single strand here this is um, the forensic say suppose there is a homicide somewhere and you want to uh, identify who is the culprit okay. who is the murderer. Now, usually a hair of the uh, of the murderer can be isolated at the crime scene, okay. but from the single piece of hair it is very difficult to do the DNA analysis. So, for that you have to amplify the DNA. So, you isolate the DNA how to amplify the DNA this is by PCR reaction. So, you take the you do the PCR and then uh, from the PCR you do the DNA sequence analysis and then you compare with your suspect DNA suspect the you have a group of suspect and from there you can take the blood and then you isolate the DNA and then you can again uh, do the analysis of the suspect and from that you can make out who is the likely murderer there is usually um, not much uncertainty because there is always a piece of uncertainty in every uh, every study or every evaluation however it has been found that it is um, it is one in a billion that there could be a uh, chance of mis uh, misidentifying the murderer okay so, that is one in forensic where the the very small amount of DNA is available okay. and then you can now only DNA sequence only DNA sequence may not be uh, may not be enough to identify the murderer. What is found that there are certain uh, certain repeat certain repeat which is um, repeat of base sequences which is present uh, in every individual repeat of certain base sequences which are present uh, which are present in a individual and that that repeat is usually different from individual to individual. So, if you can identify those repeats and then compare that gives a better way of identifying the 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 person doing the homicide okay so 
so, not only the DNA sequence, you have to see the that short repeats that are present in every individual, which vary from individual to another individual. So, that gives you more rigorous way of uh, identifying the culprit. Okay. Now, let us see identifying certain diseases, like there are many uh, genetic diseases which are. Uh, which we know that the like Huntington's disease or cystic fibrosis or there are some viral diseases which remains viral induced diseases which remains dormant for a long time and that is uh, like the HIV the human immunodeficiency virus okay, where the viral load means the amount of viral DNA will be very tiny in the in the body system in the biological fluid. Okay. So, some of these genetic uh, genetic disorders can be detected with the help of DNA like this Huntington's disease. What is this disease? Huntington's disease is a genetic disorder characterized by abnormal body movements and reduced mental abilities. Okay. That means, their mental function is defective also abnormal body movements and we have seen unfortunately baby is born with Huntington's disease. What is the reason for HD? It is caused by mutation in the gene called Huntington gene HD. What is the defect? In individuals with, with Huntington's disease, the HD gene that the Huntington, Huntington gene sorry Huntington gene that is expanded that means, uh, what happens this gene uh, has a repeat. I told you about some repeats in, health, in, in individuals, but that is a different Huntington gene is having a repeat of C A G that means, this C A G is repeated at regular intervals in the Huntington gene. Now, what happens the non Huntington uh, Huntington uh, no, or if you, if you say non HD individuals, that means people who are not suffering from this disease, this abnormality, the HD gene has a pattern called trinucleotide repeats, as I said, CAG, that repetition occurring less than 30 times. That means it is repeated, but that repetition, number of repetitions is less than 30. On the other hand, in HD individuals, thus the CAG the CAG trinucleotide repeat occurs more than 36 times. So, it is the number of times if the repeat is number of repeat is more than 36 you get this Huntington's disease. If it is less than 30 you are perfectly normal and in between I think it is uh, you have a uh, compromise. Uh, it is not very serious Huntington's disease, but serious Huntington disease is when the number of repeats are greater than 36. So, it has now incorporated originally when the baby is born, it is a genetically, uh, it is a genetic defect. Okay. So, PCR now to know whether the a a, a individual is suffering from this disease HD. So, what you do? You isolate the DNA and then amplify via, via PCR and sequence and see the number of repeats. Okay. If the number of repeats again I uh, say that if it is greater than 36, then that individual will have Huntington's disease. Cystic fibrosis again that is another cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease characterized by severe breathing difficulties and a predisposition to infections. Okay. So, they suffer from infections uh, very uh, frequently. CF this cystic fibrosis is caused by mutation in the cystic fibrosis that is a gene transmembrane conductance regulator gene called CTFR. Uh, we do not need means it is a specific gene where there is a mutation. In non CF individuals the CTFR gene codes for a protein that is a chloride ion channel that means, which makes a channel through which the chloride ions move into the cell or out of the cell. Okay. That is very important for 
uh, for is it said that transmembrane conductance uh, that is extremely important the migration of the chloride because that is a charged anion. So, normal C f what it says that um, uh, now in non C f individuals this is perfectly okay this C T f r gene that is called the uh, cystic fibrosis transmembrane uh, regulator gene conductance regulator gene that is normal if it is normal then it it expresses a protein which becomes a chloride ion which creates a chloride ion channel ok. In C f individuals persons suffering from cystic fibrosis mutation in C T f r lead to a thick mucus secretions in the lung and subsequent persistent bacterial infection ok. Again you can you can check whether there is any mutation by comparing with the healthy individual uh, versus a C f individual and then see whether there is any mutation in the C T f r gene. And the last one I told you uh, I told you about this viral infections the HIV human immunodeficiency virus what happens here the the, the HIV does complete destruction or re, very re, very reduced uh, amount of immune response is present. So, it basically destroys the immune response of a of a person ok. And, uh, but it keeps uh, in a very dormant it stays in a very dormant state for a long period of time. So, HIV uh, it says it is retrovirus we will talk about that attacks that immune, immune system we will talk about in the medicinal chemistry aspect. But if you want to know uh, because initial the viral load is very little. So, the tiny amount of viral DNA will be found in the infected individuals body fluid ok. So, in that case because PCR is very important that if you have a whatever tiny amount you have if you can add the right primer then it will be multiplied ok you can amplify that. So, therefore, if you do a PCR of the body of the DNA isolated from the body fluid uh, and if you see a PCR product because you know what is the HIV gene DNA ok. So, you know what are the primers. So, what you take the body fluid add those primers do the PCR. If you say a PCR product coming from the uh, from the bacterial fluid PCR product is generating by the primer that you have added that means there must be the viral DNA that is present. Now, where from this viral DNA is coming that means the person is likely to be HIV positive. If there is no PCR product the person is likely to be HIV negative ok. So, these are the PCR forensic I have already told you about the forensic stance. I told you about this that there is this short repeated sequences known as variable number of tandem repeats V n T r this V n T r the number of repeats can vary from 44 to 40 in different individuals. Primers are chosen that will amplify these repeated areas and the genomic fragment generated give us a unique genetic fingerprint that can be used to identify an individual. So, you have to look not only for the sequence you have to use this V n T r the variable number of tandem repeats sequences and that will give a fingerprint genetic fingerprint this is not uh, the fingerprint that we know, but this is a fingerprint of the gene. So, that is why this is called a genetic fingerprint that is fingerprint means a method of identification of an individual identify an individual. So, through the genetic uh, fingerprint we can now match the genetic fingerprint of the of the blood or the piece of hair that we obtain at the crime scene and compare with the genetic fingerprint of the suspected persons and by that you can uh, tell who is the culprit ok. So, that is I think we have now discussed the our DNA technology and we have also discussed this polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction is an in vitro process, but it is a very rapid one by which you can uh, multiply uh, DNAs and then it has got many utilities as I have shown and the R DNA technology on the other hand that gives rise to the protein is very important 
uh, ultimately if your target is protein then you apply the rdna technology and um, then you amplify the dna and get the protein out of it okay so that completes our nucleic acid for the time being nucleic acid chemistry we started with dna rna their structure and then the processes then melting the melting temperature and then we have then followed or studied the all these processes the in vivo and the in vitro process of uh, the multiplication the flow of information okay thank you